Welcome to the summit, Recognizing Spontaneous Living Now. And I can introduce you to Andreas Müller. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for being here. And we are going to be talking about non-duality. You, you, uh, you could say you're a non-duality speaker and an author as well. I am. Um, I've been reading your book, and it's also you have like four other books, and mm. it's all about pointing to to what we are or the the nature of reality, and. Um, yeah, this no thing, ungraspable freedom, is an It's a beautiful book, and the mm. pointers are are brilliant. Mm. And I must say, yeah, like the spontaneous living, the uh, this. That's what we'll be talking about. What is, and that's mm. actually all there is. And maybe I can start with just reading a little paragraph from your book with that. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because oh, I just, uh, oh. so, all right. Bottom line, that wish is no thing appearing as this. That is it. That is all there is. Nothing to be understood. Nothing to be realized nothing to be approached. It already is it. It already is whole, amazingly as it is. That is the miracle, the freedom, and the beauty. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo that sounded quite okay. <laughs> it's already it. So there's, yes. no, there's no path, there's there is nothing to do. Absolutely. I mean, when I say it's already it, that's, that may sound a bit, um, a bit weird because it still assumes there to be a special it, so to speak, a special certain reality. Well, what I meant probably is that just what happens, what seems to be going on, us having a conversation and all that stuff, that's just naturally whole and complete. And uh, there is no secret, hidden, absolute it behind it or underneath it or around it. I think that's what I meant when I say that that's it, that that's whole and complete. Like what is, it could be expressed that way. Or you also express it oftentimes as, no thing. Yes, exactly. But <clears throat> but the interesting thing is that no thing doesn't lie behind our conversation or it's not hidden within our conversation. It is exactly our conversation, so to speak. Us sitting here is no thing, is not something. That's all. That's it. And also the expression... Uh, no thing being everything, right? That's the kind of what you're saying. Exactly. So this something, this uh, this supposedly something, us having the conversation and sitting in front of screens and talking, is actually uh, no. That's wrong. Actually, is nothing simultaneously. It's something and nothing at the same time. It's not actually nothing. I don't know if, I, if that's clear. It's just something and nothing simultaneously. And, and I think that's often the misunderstanding where when I say, or when it said, nothing appearing as this conversation, because for the person, it still sounds as if these are two things. There is this conversation and it's coming out of some nothing, which is, underneath or around or behind an absolute nothing and a relative appearance our conversation but that's not really what's being said what's being said is that having this conversation is the absolute or is total so that's whole and complete already just having a conversation and whatever happens 
Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And automatically, as it is everything, it can't be approached. There's nothing separate from it. So you can't do having this conversation. You can't do what apparently happens, so to speak. And one doesn't need to do it because it's already happening, so to speak. There is no doer and it's just happening. And that I have a sense that I am actually doing something is 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 an illusion it is it doesn't that sense or that me or that i as a doer is the illusion is is imagination is not real it's it doesn't exist yeah one could say so yes one could say the impression that you have is what apparently happens as well like everything else but there never is a real doer in it or behind it. It's just not really a separate something that can do or is doing things. It's just not the case. In the end, no matter how it feels. That's the thing. I don't want to put, I don't want to make this feeling wrong because you feeling like that, you having that impression is what happens. It's not wrong. However, it's not real in a sense that there is a real separate entity. It's not there. So that that is happening, that there is a sense of me, that is totally fine too. You could say whatever happens, happens. There's no right and wrong. So to speak, exactly. It's the same wholeness that we talk about, but for no one. So when I say it's, it's the same wholeness, it's not necessarily experienced as wholeness. Yeah, yeah, because you, you also write about there is no experiencer. Exactly. Yes, the I, that, that would have the impression of I am doing, I am now here, I'm doing, is also the experiencer. It's both, it's the doer and the experiencer. It's the creator and the observer, apparently, because it's not real. Actually, it's neither nor. But it, it, the person experiences itself as some things I can influence, some things I can do, and some things I can only observe or experience. Yeah, because somehow life seems like one big experience. Well, for the person, this is life. For, for the illusion, so to speak, this is what life seems to be. Me being here and experiencing things. Ex that's, that's what the person would regard as, that's, what's life, that's what life is. My presence. <laughs> yes. But there is actually, that presence is illusionary, that, that object subject of being aware of something or conscious of something, that's part of that uh, sense of me. Exactly. That is the sense of me, so to speak. That is, when one could say that that is the, the basis of the separate experience or that, that is the description of the separate experience. I'm something and I'm aware of a separate happening i'm aware of a separate something that's that seems to be an experienced separation that falls away when there's not this subject object happening then then you could say you recognize or you don't recognize but there's a recognition of of this just happening yeah, one could say so. Yeah, there is an apparent recognition because that's the other thing that the dropping of that or the turning out or let's put it like this. Uh, liberation would be the turning out that this first subject, this I, doesn't have any substance at all. Very simplified or very superficially, one could say that's the dropping of the I. Actually, it's the turning out that it was never real. So, but as we talk, this would be the dropping of the eye. And yes, what's left is this wholeness. What's left is what apparently happens, which is just naturally whole and complete. And one could say as a story, apparently that's recognized. 
but liberation is not the recognition of that. So liberation is really the melting away of this separate energy, this, this separate feeling with no replacement really. It's not replaced with the real recognition. So that's why I'm very careful, so to speak, with the word recognition. <laughs> Because it opens up a huge potential for misunderstanding. <laughs> That's how it is with a lot of words, right? It's and people use different words and and yeah, may point to the same thing, but use different words and and is yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, because I mean, I just I mean, what I think about recognition is that it's it's very easy for the person to to turn it into an experience. Because what could experiencing also regard as to notice, to be aware of, to recognize, to, to become aware of a circumstance and to recognize wholeness, for example, or for the person it immediately sounds like, ah, I can recognize that. I can come to a, a state, to an experience where I'm able to see wholeness. And in that sense, this will never happen. You can't also not do anything to to make you say that that sense of me or I melt away. I mean, you just there's nothing to be done. Absolutely, totally, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. And then yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Apparently, that's a tough one <laughs> for the apparent eye because we'd love to do something, but all it's doing is already illusory. That's the thing. Yeah, it doesn't even exist in the first place. So how can it do something to get rid of something that doesn't exist? You know? <laughs> exactly. It's just this whole idea of doing something for whatever, the end of me or enlightenment or stuff like that. It's just circling around in its own stories you could say it's just what is this what's happening and whatever i do whoever i am whatever it is is whole it, it it's it's always whole wholeness it's always we are already <laughs> free yeah, totally yeah. totally and it's an utter surprise it's not whole because it has to be whole or it's not whole because it follows some logic. Wholeness is, this being whole and complete is not, not, uh, not a conclusion. It's not the result of a process. That's the utter surprise. It's whole already. It's whole in the first place. And there isn't anything which can leave that wholeness or which can escape from this being whole. That's why sometimes I say, or some people say, it's the natural reality, because it's not something that's waiting at the end of a long path. It's not a certain special experience that maybe at some point in the future will, will emerge. No, it's, it's the starting point, so to speak, and it's, it's everything. It's just whole already unexpectedly you can't expect this in the end the seeker can't expect this so there's no reason to seek anything i mean even um whatever you seek there's there's nothing to seek it's already whole as it is and like there's no direction it's it's uh like no no point perspective basically right there's no reference yeah. point it's just there's nowhere to go Yes, absolutely. That would be another way of saying it. What we talk about, the natural reality or non-duality, is not a perspective, which is just another word for this being an experience. It's not, it's not a way of seeing life or a way of approaching or experiencing life. Absolutely. One can just be uh, as one is. Like... There, yes. there's nothing to change there's nothing 
just uh, be whoever I am as I am as a human being here now. Yes, yes. But the experience of existence, the experience to be that, that's illusory, that's not real. So in the end, the same thing, being who you are or being you also is happening already. This too isn't something that you can do or you have to do. It's just what being you or being me, so to speak, is what apparently happens as well, like everything else already. You don't even need to do that, so to speak. You don't even need to be you and you don't even need to experience being you. You are you, so to speak, anyway already. <laughs> <laughs> like everything else, like the screen, like the wall, like the plants, like the clouds, like like everything in that sense. But again, when you say it's enough to be me, I don't mean this position, this sense of, ah, this is me, and now I can consciously be me and that's enough and stuff. No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't have to be done or experienced either. Yeah, it's you. just spontaneously happening. Exactly. Yes. Well, in the end, timelessly, but spontaneous is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I do like the term timelessly, uh, timeless. Mm. Yeah, it, because there's no moment either, right? It, it, it's interesting, like we'll talk about past or future or now, but none of those exist. Exactly, yes, yeah. It, it all melts together into something that's completely unknowable. Time, uh, present, past, future, this whole experience to be on a path and stuff like that. It, it completely, yeah, as I say, it, it, they melt together into the unknown. And in that sense, not even a moment is left. No here and now experience. This would be this experience to be something now, here, knowable, experienceable, stuff like that. That's not real. That doesn't exist. Yeah, there's literally nothing. I mean, everything is taken away with us. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, to know maybe the, all there is is that nothing, the unknown, which is everything. And yeah, it's just unknowable. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's the interesting thing. All the parts are taken away. And on the one hand, then nothing distinct or certain is left. On the other hand, what's left is everything. This nothing or Sitting in, um, sitting in front of a screen being nothing, graspable, experienceable, is at the same time absolutely everything. You can see it's not understandable at all. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I too don't understand. <laughs> it's inexperienceable. It's not even how it really is. Can't only be understood. It just isn't, it just isn't experienced even. You can't experience how it really is. Impossible, just impossible. Because it's, it, it has not to do with experience or... Because there is no experience, because experiencing isn't real. And experience, if it would be real, would only be in separation and experiencing parts. It would already be totality split into two parts where one tries to experience the other part. It does feel like though that, you know, I'm here living a life, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like. <sighs> yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, even I am, it's, it's, it's like, that, that, that is the dream too. It, it's just so spontaneously just happening that 
there's there's no one there yeah yes yeah it's totally direct i mean what we talk about is not conceptual at all and in the end it's not emotional and energetic it's utterly direct what happens what apparently happens including every notion thought sense belief whatever is utterly and directly itself there is no no distance to anything at all as i say including all beliefs including yeah everything so to speak you also mentioned you know aliveness in your book, I've come upon that word, mm. lifeness. So is that the no thing being everything, aliveness is another term? Yeah, it's, it's another term I don't say too often anymore, because to me it's a bit one-sided, because what it really it is and isn't, that's the thing, it's something and nothing, so it is and isn't. So in a way, it's aliveness and emptiness at the same time, or aliveness and death at the same time, simultaneously. But, oh, yeah, one could say it's aliveness. It's, it's full on. It's totality. Sitting in front of a screen is total. It's a bit like compared to the, to the personal, or compared, I don't know, compared to this personal experience which says there is me and I have this uh, this life that I own my life this one small stream of happening in the universe so to speak that's called me and my life and of course when that turns out to be illusory what's left is totality aliveness itself but for no one in that sense this is aliveness and like you said, it's, it's happening for no one. Uh, so it is like that me or I, that sense. And there, it's just gone and there is, is an absence of the me and it's not replaced by anything else. So it's more like uh, empty and, and as you said, it's also full on, like it's, yeah. Yeah, but as I say, it's not an. That's the thing. Well, I can't describe. No one can describe this logically, or because it's it's just not an experience. But yes, the the presence of I am turns out to be illusory. Yes, and the turning out is also the melting away of that experience. I can't. I can't really say how that is, but. As I say, it's not a concept. It's just reporting from here. That, yeah, there, there isn't. The, the center isn't there. Yes. And it's always like that for everyone, everything. So it's it's interesting how, how that sense of I and me is there for most people in the world. Yeah, one could say so. Yeah, I have no, <laughs> I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> That's true. So it, it's like there is this me, this sense of me and I, and uh, looking for something to fulfill itself because there's this lack, uh, and always, always trying to fulfill this that feels unfulfilled and wants to be happy and relaxed and peaceful and peace in the world. And there's, there's always something out there or even maybe something in here but there there's there's nothing to find because it's already so whole so but this searching though seems to you know this world is has a lot of suffering in many ways and it's, it seems like the cause of that suffering oftentimes is because of this search for fulfillment and and we take action out there that may not you know benefit other people sometimes or like i'm you know war or greed and all these things that happens in the world but 
is is that based on that sense of me or would it happen anyways even if the me wasn't there well, well, there is no there, there is no clear answer because in the end it's quite unpredictable what would happen with or without the me illusion, so to speak. So I can say two things about that. So uh, first of all, uh, the illusion of me, the uh, that most people assume themselves to be someone, is exactly the same wholeness, and it's undone. There is no real me behind that either. So in that sense, it is just wholeness as well. It's just what seems to be happening, which is wholly complete for no one on the one hand. On the other hand, you're right. It seems to be that, that, that most people experience themselves to, as someone and they do a lot of things to compensate that sense of lack. And yeah, it seems to be that a lot of war and struggle and stuff like that seems to come out of that. Yeah, true. But it's quite impossible to say where when when the illusion of I am would drop, so to speak, in the world or for a bigger amount of people. It's quite unpredictable how it would look like afterwards. Because on the one hand, yes, maybe the potential for a lot of frustration and struggle and stuff would be gone. But how it would unfold afterwards, no one knows. No one knows, really. But I assume that many strike. I mean, I assume that it might be very hard to fight for, <laughs> for the belief in one's own God <laughs> against another belief, for example. I, I can hardly imagine that this would be happening, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, like when all beliefs go, it's, it's, yeah, there's not that, I mean, the opinions may, still, and you may still have belief and such, that, that won't change, but you know, they're just what appears, there's no identity in the opinions or beliefs or preferences or anything. So to speak, there isn't anything here that uses beliefs for one's own definition and security and safety. Beliefs are fine, they're totally fine, but... Uh, they are, uh, as I say, they are not used. They are not needed for one's own definition. So, yeah. Do you feel a change in you after the me fell away? Did life change for you? Well, hmm, uh, that's hard to say because in the end, life is constantly changing. But yeah, it seems to, apparently. But yeah, it seems to, of course. I mean, it was the end of the seeking dynamic. And little by little, this changed also, or is changing still, this, this apparent character, kind of, not the character maybe itself, but of course, also the behavior that was based on seeking slowly drops. It's not, not really needed anymore, certain behavior. trauma maybe patterns not that they need to go they were never they aren't wrong and they were never wrong but my impression is they just can't be they just aren't used anymore <laughs> to fulfill one's own need yeah for fulfillment this deeper longing for fulfillment Nothing is used anymore. In that sense, nothing is needed. So what happens, what apparently happens, including this one, is kind of playing out freely, exactly as it is, not in a special or in a holy way or something, not at all. I still am as I am, so to speak. It's almost like there is more space to be who you are. <laughs> you know, there's not all these different... Uh, yes, one could say so. Yeah, but how exactly how I am in all as in all apparent aspects, so to speak. Of course, it's total. I'm total. Everything is total, and there's not the attempt to change that really, or to 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 play oneself or to manipulate one's own thoughts and feelings to be a more happy me and stuff like that. Uh, that dynamic apparently dropped. 
and you still live life and you you're still surviving so <laughs> well apparently so far yes <laughs> for no reason at all <laughs> yes it's a miracle <laughs> Yeah, I, I also I like how you say you know, life and death is it's like it's basically the same, right? Life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But then when the body dies, it just seems like there's no more life. Yeah, for the person, this looks like a huge difference. <laughs> but it's it's for the person, it is this difference between I'm now here. And death is unknowable, but it seems to be the direct opposite of me being now here. So to speak. see, that's how it seems for the person. But this presence isn't real already. And this whole dance around the ideas of life and death, presence and absence, it's just only part of that dream of I'm present. Yeah. This, whole this whole narrative just drops, this whole paradigm of life and death just drops when that which believes itself to be alive turns out to be dreamt or turns out to be unreal. And that's so when you sleep at night in deep sleep, it, it is like it, there's there's no one there. And, and, and then when we wake up, it feels like there's someone there. So we, it's easy for people like to relate to this no one because in deep sleep, there, you are no one. So every day you're, you're really... That's right. But, but my impression is that the person can only relate to the concept of deep sleep. It can't relate to how it actually is in deep sleep. Because you, you don't remember, you, you don't know when you wake up like, how, deep how it actually was and how it felt and stuff like that exactly and in in a way the same applies to during the day so when there is no one when there is no one waking up in the morning i can make i can't make any other statement so to speak or well, this message tries to describe deep sleep but it's it's failing constantly because it can't be described because there is nothing going on. There is no experience of how it really is. And there is no experience really of deep sleep. And there is no experience really of having this conversation. It's real and unreal. And it's, it's almost like everything is, is as if it's a, a dream. It's appearing. It's, you know, all these appearances that are real and not real at the same time. And alive and dead at the same time. And yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah one can't go there there isn't one that's why one can't go there like you say you 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 are like dead right and, and to me you're very alive but <laughs> oh because it's the same thing that's it there is no you and what happens is and isn't which is alive and well dead yeah 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 it's, it's there and not there yeah and it's also like any words is always just a description, right? It's a, so and, uh, it, that's even an apparent description only, <laughs> not even a real one. <laughs> so it is ungraspable, like like in your book, right? Because yeah, it's just I like unknown because it just mm. okay, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh well, Andreas, thank you so much. Mm. Your website, how can people get in touch with you? Well, I think um, the website is uh, thetimelesswonder.com, one word. Probably there's first the German page popping up, but there's a, a flag where you can change the language. But it's thetimelesswonder.com. And there's my email and all, all that stuff. And uh, events and such. And events, yeah. For anyone who's interested in this message, there's, you can find <laughs> anything you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Well, excellent. I, I really appreciate it, Andres. Thank you so much. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Gorgeous. Really lovely. Thanks for the invitation.